Joseph is an artist and an environmental graphic designer living in Pasadena, California. During the day, he develops architectural signage programs for retail venues, educational facilities, transportation systems, and healthcare campuses. In the evenings and weekends, he sketches and paints landscapes and urban scenes in watercolor. He is the author of four books, the most recent one being Expressive Painting. You can see his urban uh, sketch work at josephstoddard.com. You can also see uh, a number of his works behind him there in the picture. So Joseph loves architecture and Frank Lloyd Wright and making models. And so Wright's Jacob's house model, which you see here in the picture, was a perfect project for him to share a tip. So I'll turn it over to, to Joseph. Thank you, Greg. Uh, yes, this was a, a great project. It was a, it was a fun project. And it was challenging, but in a very uh, satisfying way. The first thing I did was uh, do, I did a little research. I printed images from the uh, Model Landmarks web, uh, um, website. And I also did some research on the actual house, um, the, the first Usonian house, and got some images uh, and a floor plan. You can go to the next uh, slide, Greg. And you can see the floor plan in the background there of my workspace. And that helps me to understand the architect and what he wanted to do with it, with the building, and uh, kind of was an in, uh, inspiration for the, for the model. Uh, you can see my workspace. It's fairly neat and organized. I really like, uh, like to have a, a, a clean space, have the parts all separated and whatnot. Uh, next. Um, I did a little customization on the, on the terrain part of the model. I supported a few of the overhanging pieces by taking some of the scrap pieces and uh, sandwiching them together and putting them underneath. So I had a sort of a bulletproof uh, terrain model. You can see the little diagram that I, I put together to, to illustrate that. Uh, next. I also used a right angle to establish a nice vertical for the walls. Now the tab and slot construction on this model is perfect and it went together very, very easily and very well. But I wanted to double check all the walls uh, when I would put the first one in to make sure they were perfectly square, which just ensured everything else uh, fit, fit perfectly. Okay, next. I uh, dry fit everything before gluing and used uh, minimal glue. And when I used these, uh, these uh, acrylic parts, I wanted to make sure I didn't have any fingerprints on them. So I used a tissue and wiped the, the, the piece off very carefully with a tissue. And then I set it into the model using the tissue. So there was no chance of a fingerprint. Next where I cut the, the wood off of the, the, the uh, support piece. I sanded it a little bit to remove the little tab. And then I uh, uh, retouched it with a colored pencil, a Prisma color pencil that matched the brown just to make sure there weren't any uh, you know, raw edges. Okay. With this model, the horizontal grooves on the siding were very important and it was very important that they align and Many of these uh, panels go on only one way, but one or two of them could be inadvertently turned upside down. And so you want to make sure that uh, you, again, kind of dry fit it before you remove the adhesive. I put one of the, the veneers on upside down, but was able to remove it carefully with my X-Acto knife before the adhesive set to make sure that the grooves aligned. Next. I like to photograph the process at each little step. Next. And then at the end, photographing it outside. And I see a lot of you modelers did that with the great natural light. And that really makes the model come alive, especially with a, with a nice dark background. And then next. And then of course, uh, invest in a display case because that really finishes the model up and makes it like a nice little jewel uh, to your collection. 